Hey guys, before the video starts, I have a quick special announcement. If you are a pre-nursing student, nursing student, or newly graduated registered nurse, and you're living in the Boise, Idaho area, or within about maybe three to four hours from the area, please pay attention. If you do not live in that area and you want to skip ahead to the main video, it will start at the time you see on the screen. So if you are in that area and you still are watching, then I wanted to let you know that the Idaho Student Nursing Association is having their convention. So I wanted to take some time to tell you why you really want to consider going. First, we'll start with pre-nursing students. You really want to consider going if you're a pre-nursing student because this convention is going to have multiple representatives representing many different universities, such as Idaho State University, LCSC College, Boise State University, Utah University, Northwest Nazarene University, Grand Canyon University, and more. Pre-nursing students, if you are thinking about going to any of these colleges or in the general vicinity, you are crazy not to go. Getting FaceTime with representatives from these colleges can be extremely hard, and here in one day you can speak to lots of them. When I was a pre-nursing student, I attended an event like this and was able to speak with the representatives asking questions like, what are their prereqs, what classes of mine would transfer, what types of financial aid they offered, and more. Of course, they may not be able to answer every single question you have, but they most likely will surprise you. Attending this event helped me start nursing school an entire semester early, which saved me so much time and money, and I am so grateful for that. For current nursing students and new graduate nurses, especially those who have not taken their board examination, there will be a two-hour NCLEX review. Guys, I started reviewing for the NCLEX my first year of nursing school. My classmates thought I was crazy until they started seeing my grades and then they started copying me. You have to start these types of questions ASAP. Many of your professors may emulate these types of questions, so you may be literally just getting a nursing exam review. So I'm actually going to be speaking at this event, and I'm so honored that I will be able to share my top tips on cultivating the genius study state. And guys, I promise you, it is not going to be what you think. I'm going to take you through a mental process that is going to blow your mind, and I'm not just building it up. In fact, when I was in nursing school, and I had been doing this process for years, you know, getting into nursing school and being successful in nursing school, one day I actually attended a Tony Robbins seminar, and I was dumbfounded to find out that he does a very similar process to mine. This process helped me, of course, ace nursing school. I graduated with honors and also crushed the NCLEX examination, but it helped me out with so much more including, but not limited to, having an empowering career as a nurse, writing three books, having a successful business, attracting the love of my life, financial stability, and a physical body that is vital and energetic. It all comes with utilizing pain and pleasure intelligently to help you accomplish every goal you set out to create. This is a speech I promise you do not want to miss. The next thing that they're planning for you is that you will also have a panel of graduate school professors. They will share exciting opportunities of an advanced practice nursing degree and program options. Again, FaceTime with multiple programs in one location can and will save you time, money, and a big headache. On the next topic, there will also be representatives from local hospitals. This day and age, it can be very difficult to get that first job. We are in a bit of a strange time. There are many baby boomers that are still healthy and in the workforce. It may seem like nursing is not in need as much. However, mark my words, this is not the case. Healthcare opportunities for nursing is expanding faster than ever before. And with each passing year, being credentialed as a nurse is getting more and more valuable. Honestly, though, as new graduates today, you have to be aggressive about getting that first job. I get emails from nurses who did not seize every opportunity and are still looking for jobs two to five years after graduating. Essentially, you need to start your first job ASAP. And having FaceTime with local hospital representatives is key. Even if it's just a quick, hello, nice to meet you, this can still help get their email address, find out about their hospital. Then when it comes time for the interview, you'll have something more personal to say, such as I met, I don't know, Jan Patterson at the ISNA convention, and she told me so many exciting things that were going to happen in your hospital and was inspired. Guys, going to these conventions, it looks good and it's something to be a conversation starter. So when is it? It's going to be October 22nd. And it's an all-day event from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to be at Boise State University. 
and the cost is going to be $30, which includes breakfast and lunch, but if you are a member of the ISNA, it will be $25. And also, there will be free copies of my first and second book for the first 100 attendees, which I'm super excited about, and I will sign them for you if you would like. And finally, guys, the organizers of this event have truly put their heart and soul into this. It takes so much work to put one of these events together, and they have seriously been working on this for over 10 months. I promise you will be happy that you attended. This is truly an opportunity and in life, you have to seize every opportunity you get or you may be left behind. Trust me, like I mentioned, I get sad emails all the time. They make me want to cry because there's nothing I can do for them. I know that they sat on the sidelines when opportunities came their way and now they're scrambling to catch up. But for some, it's literally too late. Make the decision to go now. You have absolutely everything to gain and nothing to lose. I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, without any further ado, let's learn how to draw some blood cultures. Hey guys, welcome to Empower, and my name is Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much, as usual, for watching my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to drop one set of blood cultures. Whenever you do see an order, a lot of times what you will see is two sets of blood cultures ordered, and that is to identify whether the cultures were contaminated in some way. Blood culture contamination is unfortunately pretty common, and it's due to non-sterile technique, or essentially people not doing it correctly, like from not cleaning properly enough and stuff like that. So when you do need to draw two sets of blood cultures, you'll need to select two different peripheral sites. For instance, in this video, I'm going to show you a peripheral draw. So if you use the right arm for one site, then you can go to the left arm for the other site. If you are using a central line, you are supposed to draw one set, wait 15 minutes, because within 15 minutes, the whole blood is supposed to circulate again, and then draw the other site. As always, with all of these skills videos, they're really just meant to orient you to the process, so that it's not so overwhelming when you are in nursing school, or in this case, maybe even phlebotomy school or anything like that just so you can really focus on what you need to do of course I have to put the disclaimer you always need to follow the policy and procedures at your facility although of course I do my best in the video to show you proper technique of course you always have to follow the policy and procedure at your facility so I hope you enjoy if you like this video and you want to see more like it please give this video a thumbs up and I cannot wait to see you again next week I love you guys so much all right talk to you soon so the first thing that you need to do is gather your supplies what you will need is a biohazard bag, a tourniquet, chlorhexidine swabs or alcohol swabs, whichever is indicated by your facility, blood culture bottles, one aerobic and one anaerobic, adapter, a needle, a sharpie, gauze, and tape. So the first thing I do is I mark where the fluid in the culture bottles is. This is not 100% necessary, but it just helps me keep track of it since I don't always draw blood cultures. So whenever I do, I really just have to remind myself of kind of how to do it because in most hospitals we do have phlebotomists. But I will say in places like the ER and ICU, we are constantly doing the labs ourselves and even in some IMC units. So I put a mark where the fluid is and then I put another mark where it needs to be filled up at. Now I know you can calculate this in your head, you know, it's not necessary to make these marks. This is just what I do that makes it easier for me. You know how much fluid that you need because it will say how much fluid is needed on the bottles. For example, five to 10 mLs, five to seven, seven mLs, seven to nine. So each bottle is going to be different. So just read the bottle and figure out how much you need from what the bottle says. At that same time, make sure you check the date and expiration because that's one thing that um, these bottles do expire. They are a type of solution where bacteria can grow and so you want to make sure that they are not expired because you want their results to be accurate. So the next thing you do is you tie your tourniquet and you wipe with chlorhexidine and allow it to dry. As you allow it to dry, you can open up the tops on the specimen bottles. And also wipe the tops with chlorhexidine or alcohol, whichever again is indicated by your facility. I think most people or most places are going towards chlorhexidine. Then what you wanna do is open the adapter or specimen holder Followed by opening the needle or AKA vacutainer.
removing any plastic or extra pieces. Then you want to connect the vacutainer to the tube holder. Take the plastic protective sheath off of the needle. Then with the bevel up, you want to go to your selected vein, go right in, place a piece of tape to secure the vacutainer. Then take your specimen bottles. These specimen bottles, all of them, are actually vacuum secured. So when you do insert a needle, I'm going to show you in slow motion, but when, as soon as you insert the needle, the blood is going to start flowing as long as you are in the vein. So connect the adapter to the bottle or tube and watch as the blood flows. Once you have the desired amount, you put the other bottle. Then place gauze over the site, remove the tourniquet, and slowly remove the needle. Cure the needle so that it is protected. Place tape over the gauze. Finally, place all the specimens in a biohazard bag. Make sure you have your date, time, and initial, as well as the appropriate label on the specimens. All right, as always, I hope you love this video, and I cannot wait to see you guys next week.